to your HP with yeah. bad on the left, and then it shows you uh, short oh. and long rest. Thank you. So, welcome to the world of Iridus. Long ago, ancient magics ruled the world, bending the very nature, the very matter of the universe to the whims of arch mages of unimaginable power. But their hubris pushed too far, and their kingdoms collapsed, wreaking havoc and death across the world, splintering what once was a single continent into two. Those who survived those dark days survive in the harsh new world of unleashed horrors and lingering and dangerous magics. Now, over a thousand over a thousand years later, life has begun to rebuild. People have banded together, forming communities, cities, and now they fight to find their place in this world. Shit, music. Why is that not working? Uh, rhythm got continued or something? You see how it says playing back soon? Okay, no, there we go. Oh, right, we had cut save. music? No. And I can't add music. Fuck. Anyways, we can move on without it. Oh, one, one way... We've done it lately in, in, in our sessions is one person just shared uh, uh, their YouTube streaming, uh, uh, something like that. I could actually do that. The deep down of what it was called. new horizon dawns upon the town of Elmark, a humble settlement of buildings built as a nexus between the nearby farmsteads and hamlets of the southwest east half. At the heart of the town stands the market where people gather to trade and gossip, and gossip overlooked by the dilapidated church which overlooks the town, currently undergoing renovation. Just outside the town stands a half a dozen watchtowers, keeping a lookout over the dangerous landscape of town limits. Today, in the early hours of the morning, with the sun gently cresting the horizon, a caravan of merchants approach one such watchtower. Aeon and Loom, you walk slowly beside the familiar carts, a host of a dozen remaining merchants beside you. Tudar, the grey-haired human leader of caravan, walks some ten paces before the rest of the group, and approaches the tower. At its base, a man stands in a simple chain shirt and a spear, holding a lantern. As Tudar approaches, he waves, and Tudar waves back. As the guard quickly opens the door to the tower, two more men come out. Hail, Tudar! Welcome back. Good to see you too, friend. The guard turns to the other two. Regular inspection, don't take too long. They nod and begin approaching the wagons, as the wagons slowly come to a halt. 
Any news of the road? Tudor lowers his head slightly. We encountered a pack of dire wolves on the road. They looked hungry. Four of our number lost their lives. You'll find the bodies in the last wagon. As the guard hears this, he too lowers his head. I'm sorry to hear that. We'll keep an eye out if any come too close here. While they continue to exchange, the other two guards begin inspecting the wagons. One from the front, one from the back. The one who approaches the back lifts the tarp and recoils slightly at the side of the bodies, now covered in cloth, but still grim. He begins to move on until he catches sight of Yu Lu, standing close to the dead. He just catches your eye, doesn't say anything, but has your attention. I'll just look at him. Is he going to say anything? He kind of... He catches your eye and regards you, but carefully moves around the wagon. Doesn't say anything. Just keeps a wide berth. I'll just not pay any attention and stay with the deceased. A few moments pass and the guards finish their duties as Tudor finishes his conversation. We'll be setting up in the market soon and take our dead to Clayton. The guards wave the wagons forward and with some final well wishes allow the caravan to pass into the town proper. The wagons are led past the simple wooden houses and towards the market square where the great old elm tree stands overlooking. You see about a dozen other merchants already there in the early hours of the morning, currently setting up their wares and erecting simple market stalls before the day's trade to come. Tudor leads the group to one side, and with practiced ease they begin to, begin to do the same. After giving some simple instructions to the traders, he approaches you two. Can you help carry the bodies up to the church? It's just on the hill, you can't miss it. I'll introduce you to Clayton. Gladly help. Hey, on. Okay. In a moment, you construct a simple stretcher and begin to transport the bodies up the hill. Tudar once again goes first, and upon reaching the church, he bangs on the heavy wooden doors. After a minute or so, the door slowly opens and the bishop Clayton greets you. A very old man, perhaps early 70s, who stands with a calm authority, dressed in simple white robes. He regards Tudar with a polite nod. Welcome back, Tudar. I believe it's been some months since you were last year. Indeed? Six months, but I'm afraid I haven't come to you to chat. On our way here, several of our number were slain. We wish to return them here so they may be buried. Ah, I see. Grim tidings, indeed. Come, I will prepare the bodies inside. Tudor motions for you to enter, and Clayton steps aside, allowing to you to pass. As you do, Clayton catches your eye, Luke. Oh, my apologies. I didn't realize a priestess of the Grave Mother was among you. It's all right. You're the first one to recognize me. May I help with the preparations and give them the final blessings? Of course, please. Join me downstairs. We shall prepare them together. He begins to lead the small group through the church, which you can see there's like scaffolding and sheets it's currently undergoing rebuilding. He leads you out towards the back of the church and down a cold flight of stairs into a um, um, subterranean crypt. The bodies are laid out and you begin your work to prepare them for burial. As you do so, Clayton waves Aeon and Tudor away as they are no longer needed. But before he does so, he says that body should be ready for burial by sundown, and you can hold a funeral then. 
As Loon continues the burial preparation, and Aeon heads back to the market to help the other merchants prepare their stands, we move our focus south of the town. Another watchtower stands guard beside the road, its lanterns lit as a beacon of safety as the morning's light deepens into an auburn gold. A solitary cart passes beneath its light, its passengers enjoying a soft tune hummed by their gnomish employer. Lorcan and Threat approach the market square, passing through with some greet cold greetings to Rudy Woodrow as they make their way to his shop built on the edge of the square. Rudy leads the mule and the cart around and behind the large storeroom and hitches it to a post. Welcome to Elmark, my friends. Would you be so kind as to help me unload? Yeah, sure. You were kind enough to lead us here. As you begin lifting the tarp and lifting the heavy crates off the cart, you see Rudy put his fingers to his lips and whistles two notes. Barely a moment later, the doors to the storeroom open, and a diminutive gnomish woman appears. Rudy! Welcome home! Cecilia, my love. The gnomes embrace warmly, before Cecilia regards you both. I see you hired new hands in this time. Yes. Marcus had to stay in Al-Zahan. I met our owl friend here in the town, and our lizard friend on the road. They helped me out of a spot of bother with some bandits. Bandits? Are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm fine, not a scratch. Oh, Rudy, you do worry me so. I'm not letting you out of my sight for a month. Of course, dear. Wouldn't dream of it. Well, let me help get these, all these crates inside. And with that, she joins you. Between you, but mostly Lord Can, you begin moving the crates, with Rudy and Cecilia helping you navigate the storeroom. Mm. After a couple hours, you finish moving and take a rest. By this point, you're fairly hot and sweaty, so Cecilia brings out a silver platter with a jug of cold lemonade and some small sandwiches. Oh, thank you kindly, ma'am. Of course. You must be tired. Here, uh, this will right I'm fine. Like, tired's not even new with vocabulary. <laughs> After a little while, Rudy comes out as well to join you, carrying a leather bag in a scabbard. That will be all. Thanks for everything. He reaches into his bag and produces a small coin pouch and tosses it to Lorcan. Here you go. What I promised. Uh, thank you, Gandalf, sir. This... Uh, right. You, you go. Uh, is this to share from a friend to your... No. For you, friend. He turns his attention to threat. I couldn't help but notice you've had very little in the way of equipment, so I thought I'd give you some things to help you start out. It's not a lot, but it's been collecting dust for years, so I thought it'd be better in your hands. How he kind of you. The bag and the scabbard. How oh, kind of you. Well, since you've given me this fine equipment, I promise you I will find out more about this Bahir and what he was up to. Of course. Within the bag is a variety of equipment, as well as rations and a water skin, along with another coin pouch containing your pay and a little extra. So your standard background starting equipment is now given to you. Yeah. Drawing the sword from its sheath, you find a rapier. It's fairly dirty and rusted from disuse, but with a little care, it would make quite the serviceable weapon. You notice the guard is a hollow dome of silver, engraved with the design of an angelic warrior slaying a demon. Admire it for a bit. Well, 
cheated again and like thank him once again. He nods. Thank you again for all your help. I don't think I'll be making any trips anytime soon, so I'll let you go. If you need food in bed, the Briarmold Inn is always open. They're good folk. They'll treat you right. All right. Thank you for uh, thank you for the trip. Oh, thank you for the pay, and you take care now, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Will do. I don't think Cecilia would let anything bad happen. Mm. All right. All right. As Threat and Lorcan make their way back into the market square to peruse the wares, we turn our attention south again. The day passes with a warm sun, pleasant breeze, breeze. The sky passing through all the hues of morning into day and setting once again, once again as two wayward travellers make their way to the southern watchtower. Haggard and rough from a long journey, they approach the guard station. Adelis and Silo, along with your companion, see the structure from a distance. Not quite in view of the guards yet. How do you wish to proceed? This better be the last fucking town we have to go through to get to this place. Well, Silo, I'm... I am glad you're so excited to reach our destination, but... I feel like you've gone half blind. Is it like there's a smile here? And... Hmm. What? I'm sorry, I need to tend to Yura. I turn to Yura and I try to consult with her. How is she doing? She's doing good. She's, well, good in the circumstances. She's very okay. hungry. Like, oh. uh, you too. And she's very tired from the long journey. Uh, God. But she's upbeat. Yeah. Do you, uh, what is the name of this town we're going to again? Uh, you said this to me like three months ago. I'm sorry. Elmark. Elmark, yes. Okay. If uh, we talk to this guard and he doesn't know where Elmark is, I ain't staying mm -hmm. in this town. We've travelled for how many weeks now? Listen, I'm, I'm sure he'll know. You've been on the road for about a month and a half. I think. Whilst we're there, I'll go pick up some food for you. Yeah. Stay out here. She nods and kind of... It's almost a purr. It's like an affectionate growl that she emanates. And you feel mm. the emotion kind of convey that she'll wait for you here. Let's get this over with. We're in civilization for once in Blue Moon. Let's not take this over with. Let's take our time with this. Well, last... Maybe you've forgotten, but it was not too pleasant last time. There was only a bit of fighting. No one died. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You went out with right. Me. See, we'll figure it out. Just, you know, no fighting, please. I won't start anything, but I will. I know it. you're perfectly capable, and I trust in your capabilities. Yes, However, exactly. I would prefer to not evoke the wrath of any, any townsfolk, preferably. As long as they. Don't walk up to me again, drunk, and go and be aggressive. They will keep their fingers. <sighs> that, that's fine. Let's go. With that, you begin once again on the road proper and begin approaching the guard tower. As you get close enough, one guard, it looks like one guard is on the outside of the tower holding a lantern. And he's just kind of pacing back and forth across the road idly until he catches. Um, he, like, until he sees you. 
In which point he just stands in the middle of the road, blocking your way. As you approach, he goes, Who goes there? We're just two travelers. Don't. We're just looking, looking for some directions and perhaps a bit of food. Or coin, of course, but. Tell me. Uh, could you tell me where the town Almag is? It's just up the road. This is the southern gateway. Oh, you mean to tell me it's here? Indeed. Only about an hour north of here, along the road. Can't miss it. Well, thank the gods. That's pleasant news. Well, thank you, good sir. Where have you two come from? Um, Down south, a couple of different cities, been travelling quite a while, so... Yeah, we're just travellers who have met along the way. Very well. No, of any inn that's, like, taking places. Now you have a nice bed to sleep on for once. Indeed. Bramall Inn is the name. Plenty of warm food and beds. You see him kind of looking you over and he clocks the weapons that you both have. I'd ask you not draw your weapons in the town. If you do, you will suffer the punishment. Of course, sir. Do not worry, we won't. This is just for safety along the path. Make sure you don't. Any kind of steps aside off the path letting you guys go forward. Yeah, finally at the end of this journey, then. Didn't take you for the kind that like a bed, but... Well, I prefer it's better than sleeping on the floor. Really? Yes, well, it's not my most ideal place, but, you know, it's better than dirt and mud. I must say, I took you for... You like, a, you like the rough wilderness and... I saw how you fight. But I, power to you. I'm I, glad for you. You're, I still am, am amazed sometimes at how much of an idiot you are, honestly. <laughs> well, I'm glad to surprise you. As you two continue down the road into the town proper, across the way, atop the hill, a procession is about to begin. After a long day of preparations, Tudor's caravan gathers in the shadow of the church. Now four rough coffins lay ready to be interred, flowers resting on their face. Clayton stands before them and begins and clears his throat. <clears throat> Today we lay to rest these poor unfortunate souls, so that they may, may find peace in the Guardian's grace. Good folk, we pass from this world to the next in the embrace of the great mistress. Today we are joined by an emissary, mistress. He glances to you and gestures for you to stand beside him. If um, you'd like to say a few words. Before doing that, I would have asked, like during preparation, um, is it fine for me to actually cast a ritual spell like i would have asked him in private like how would the others react and if it's fine to do such a thing um, considering knowing how what the general reaction would be in this case you'd be fine to do it okay because like he's introduced you as um a priest i'm not a random person casting magic i yeah. exclusively told him what i want to do yeah exactly like they, they, they know your vibe, they're all kind of... Everyone is visibly uh, unsettled by your presence, but no one's, like, mad or upset that you're here. They all kind of get Just it. Just nervous, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's that Bob. Just turn towards... What was his name? The priest? Yeah. Clayton. I turn towards Clayton. Thank you for having me today. 
I'm sad that my first day in Elmark has to be like this, but it's my duty, and I will now give them the last Euro rites, and I will start to cast the uh, ceremony spell as a ritual. Okay. Want me to put it in the chat? Uh, yeah. Go for it. For this, I'll say you can cast the one ceremony for all four bodies. Yeah, I'm gonna use the funeral right one, obviously. Yeah. As you begin to cast the divine magic, weaving the celestial spell, you go to each coffin, gently place your hand on top of them. There's a slight pulse, this kind of grey mist that coats them go to the next one, the first thing, each one. The flowers almost seem to bloom as the mistress's magic takes their bodies and begins to prepare them for their soul's journey onwards. As the last body is placed, the spell completes ceremony takes hold. A few moments of silence pass before Plate gestures to two of the um, members of Tudor's caravan with shovels. They slowly begin lowering each coffin into their graves and begins digging. You hear a muttering among the crowd as everyone says their own silent prayers. Eventually, as the last shovel of dirt is placed, the bodies are covered and the funeral is complete. As the ceremony comes to a close, Tudor approaches you both. Well, that's it, I suppose. I appreciate all your help with this. He reaches into his cloak and pulls out two coin pouches. As promised for your services, I think we've all had enough of the road for now, and I think we'll stay in Elmark for a while. You're welcome to look for other opportunities should they arise. For now, we're gathering in the Briarmold Inn to mourn and to celebrate the lives of the Fallen. You're welcome to join us. to the end? Yeah, I will. Okay. You make your way alongside Tudor in Bloom before you leave and join them. Is there anything else you'd like to do? So are you going with them to the end straight away? Uh, oh, that's what you mean now? Um... Yeah, since I'd be staying at the inn, then yeah, probably. Okay. You make your way alongside Tudor to the inn, where you enter into a raucous affair. Most of the tables have been gathered into the center of the room, where you see the traders have begun to drink and chat with enthusiasm, and you join in with their revelry. As the evening continues, you all enjoy a warm meal of cooked meats, steamed vegetables, and always available mugs of fine ale and other beverages of your choosing, brought to you by the young Rami. The inn's traders talk and consume the space with a mournful exuberance. Occupying the other tables sit Adelis and Sila, and another, Lorcan and Threat, and the last solitary occupant sits alone. A stranger who keeps to himself, but a smile is visible across his thin face as he enjoys the atmosphere. 
Uh, how much is it for, because I'm assuming me and Adelaide have already got dot um, rooms, how much would that be? Uh, give me a second. I don't intend on sleeping in the... Uh... Fine then, how much is it for my fucking room? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, fuck uh, off. Five, you seven, can enjoy nine. your bed. Have fun. I will. <laughs> Uh, five silver for the room, and then three silver for the meal and drink. Uh, eight silver, okay. Oh, that's, the wrong item. that's expensive. So, so if you're just eating and drinking, add less, it'd be three silver. Well, we need and that, And that would be for everyone. To stay in the room, it's five silver, and then for food and drink, it's three. So, eight silver for now? Yeah. Twelve and two silver. Again, I question the existence of elevators. How much do? Oh, yeah. Uh, how how much do we get actually? The evening draws on, comes to a close, the energy beginning to slowly trail off as some of the merchants head off into some of the rooms in the inn, others to other places in town. The evening turns to night, and everyone makes their way out. Soon the inn, the inn is calm once more quiet, with only your company and a stranger remaining. You um, see the bar. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Looking around, so it's just, it's us six and then the stranger, right? What's the stranger? Is he, like, wearing just normal clothes? Yeah. Was... Okay. A little raggedy, little beat, beat up, um, kind of tunic and trousers. But he's kind of kept to himself, slowly drinking and eating, but, like, enjoying the atmosphere this whole time. Okay, how armed are the other people in the um, inn? Um, you see a few visible weapons. Um, Aeon, you'd see visibly has a sword. I think you have a sword. Hmm. Um, uh, so Aeon and Threat both visibly have weapons on them. I think Loon, you have? Yeah, you would have a weapon as well. Yeah. I do as well. Okay. And, everyone's and, armed. Yeah, so everyone's armed in some capacity. I'm gonna quickly just talk to Atlas. Hey, you think that god we talked to earlier? Do you think he gets bribes for bringing people this way? There's not a lot of travelers in this inn. I mean, it's just. You know. Bustling town in New York. Is it? Beginning? It's not that bustling, it's quite so. Been rumors of this place, I mean, we can't have been the only ones who've heard. Yeah, true. To be fair, did you actually see any other taverns in this place? This is like the only one. I suppose you are right on that, my friend. Quite. Peculiar, though. What is? I don't too much fancy the company of so many other people wielding weapons. Mm, that's why I think they're travelers. You are very likely correct. That's fine. What's the plan for now, then? Are we gonna stay here for a couple of days, or are we moving on? Mm. Well, personally, I think I... I'm going to need to get back to Fiora tonight, but I might go figure out what I'm going to do, rather than just running. A month on the trail has made me realize that 
sometimes it's nice to have a place to settle down and not just have to move on again and again. How about you? I don't know. Realise that this place is blimmin' expensive, so we are staying, we're gonna need to get some money. Uh, I saw there's probably manual labour or something like around here. If not, see yeah. what else is around. The locals should know a couple of different traders. See what's going on. Looking around, I don't think our chances of getting a job are too poor. I think we're plenty qualified. Well, not exactly a farmer. Not about you. Not sure about you. <laughs> well, I could probably figure out a thing or two. Fuck my way out of it. Ah, we can start it all tomorrow. Hmm. That is true. Hmm. So, you see this quiet, fairly empty tavern now, the barmaid who's been serving you all night is kind of is wiping down the tables, taking mugs out behind the bar. As she does, she is not so subtly making her way into the presence of Lou and Aeon, who sit finishing a glass of their drink. As she kind of slowly but like noticeably steps closer and closer she kind of reaches your table hi uh i'm nivian i was wondering well i i was talking to some of your friends earlier and heard you were adventurers of sorts i don't know if you've got plans or anything but I was wondering if you'd like a job? Well... Adventure, sort of... Comes with the job, I guess, but... Yes. I do need to earn my stay somehow. So... You see, just like Aeon, just like being drunkly, like, taught, like... Like in the like before, like talking about some tales of where uh, his job, and when he hears it, he says, "Yes." You can see her face is suddenly bright with excitement. Good. Um. Well, there's this place, uh, an old ruin of some fancy mansion or something, about half a day's journey west. It's a real dump, but there's a real spark to it, you know? Anyways, uh, I was looking for help clearing it out. I've got this idea that it would make a wonderful inn, and I would love to run my own, one of my own one day. I mean, this, and she kind of gestures to the briar malt. This is great and all, and I love my dad, but sometimes, sometime I need to get out of my own, you know? Kind of make something of my own. At the mention of ruins, you see Lou perking up a bit. Well, it being ruins does quite interest me. Seeing why they're quite ancient, probably. And, well, I do not personally really care for your personal matters or how good the idea of opening up an inn there would be, but you said it's half a day journey. I actually, I meant to cut that. It's a day's journey. I wrote so, half a day and changed it and then did change my notes. Um, or a day, it says a day's journey. Yeah. It's quite, well, I don't know, say, quite unprotected out there, no then? No town yeah. around it or anything? Sure yes, it's, fine it's just off an old road and. Yeah. How openly do they talk about this? Sorry? How openly do they talk about this? Pretty open. All of, all, like, all of you can hear this, there's no other noise going on, so all of you can hear this conversation. Yeah, it's like sometime, um, middle, sometime... 
in the middle of the Zlokan's gonna head over and be like, Getting adventurers, eh? Hello. Hello, just gives, like, looks at him at, from the side, we're like, like I said, bit forced, but yes. Still has, yeah. like, a mug about it, about as big as his head in his head. Just cheers with it. <laughs> yeah, Alan just looks at Slocum and just, like, thinks he's, like, evil dreaming or, like, completely wasted the levels he doesn't believe. He just sees illusions. <laughs> well, I'm all, I'm real all right. I think. Hold on. Sets down the drink and just squishes his head for a moment. Yes, I'm real. Uh, uh. <laughs> all right. Lillian turns, looks at you, kind of... Oh, are, are you an adventurer too? Well, I travel, I do some stuff, uh, I know how to fight. I walk up beside him and goes like, he's one of the best. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's biased because he almost died. <laughs> Trust me, I've seen him, he took on five bandits all by himself. <laughs> uh... That's wonderful! Oh, would you be... Willing to help? Sure. So, what's what's the what's the list then? Uh, how a little bit like you you and I could check out some ruins, eh? Is it haunted? And he uh, looks visibly excited. Well, I don't know for sure if it's haunted, per se. I've been out there with some friends. We sort of watched it for a while, and we heard some weird noises from inside. We didn't go in, so I can't help much. But all I know is that there are rats in the supply shed out back, and some weird-looking plant in the greenhouse. So, um, all I'd ask is you take a peek inside and deal with anything dangerous. Well, if that makes sense. Of course. If it is haunted, I've never punched a ghost, and that's exciting. <laughs> um, I've been saving up for months so I can pay, pay you decently. Uh, 15 gold each. What do you mean saving up? Is, is, like, is that like all you have for? Well, most of it. Good. I, I don't know about the others, but as for me, you can wait with paying for the moment. Like, I didn't, not that big of a deal. I'm more of a along for the ride kind of guy. <laughs> oh, but I, I'd feel bad if I didn't pay you at all. I um, just, I just not along. Just hold off the payment until we're actually done and scout out the cave. We can discuss everything afterwards. Because 50 gold per person is quite a lot, and, well, you would need some money to start the tavern, you know? Yes, but... Uh, See? Let's discuss it afterwards. Alright. Well... A word of advice? Tap is not good for you. <laughs> you all kind of look over and glance at the... One who's addressed you now. Well, mm, just when you know, wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. You seem like a genuine and kind person, and well, with all due respect to these fine gentlemen, adventuring's not always the kindest business. <laughs> oh, I, I, I wouldn't going I'd be staying here um she kind of looks around looks towards the the back of the tavern and then looks back at you right my dad doesn't know that I'm doing this so I have to stay here but I I need people to go right right no worries 
I'll be a as hush as a as a oh, bloody hell I'm too drunk for for uh, uh, analogies. And she looks over at Atlas and Silo. You two seem rather... Um... How do I put this? Well-equipped? You wouldn't happen to... Be busy or anything. Would you? I'm sure we can clear you up our schedule. Saying the right price, of course. Of course. Well. You can see now she's like visibly getting more and more excited the more people who are joining. No, I'll be totally honest. I didn't actually uh, hear really what you were saying. You know, you're talking to the people over there, none of my business. What I heard was something about building, go their way. What's actually inside of it? Why do you need people to clear it out? It's a, it's just like an old mansion. It's, you know, broke down and abandoned. Uh, but it has this brilliant layout and a great view of the road, and I thought it would make with a, just a wonderful inn. So there may so, actually be nothing there. Yes, but I pay you regardless. And we did hear stuff, me and my friends. We just didn't go inside because that's, you know, even for us, a little too dangerous. What do you think, Atlas? Sounds like a nice day trip. Nothing wrong with it. Besides, it seems we get to make friends. Uh, Thirty weeks living. Ah, uh, yeah. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Wonderful. You can see she's now like almost giddily bouncing on her toes. All up front, of course, right? Well, I. <laughs> Uh, you, you can see now she's like visibly flustered. I I was planning to pay when the job was done. <laughs> no, that's not how this is gonna work. I'll take half up front on good word. Okay, okay, I can, I can do that. It's um. Well, what I said was uh, 15 gold per person. So, I can get you 7 gold now and pay you the rest later. Mm, we'll do 8. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll just go um, get it. You all, in the meantime, why don't you introduce yourselves? Um, and as she begins to walk away, she goes like to the back where like stairs lead up to the room, and she passes by the stranger. And she she still looks very excited, and she's like, "Oh, and and you, uh, would you be willing to help?" And you see the stranger just kind of looks up suddenly, who was kind of zoned out. Oh. Uh, I'm not an adventurer. Just Lillian kind of looks a little... She, like, deflates for a minute before returning back to her enthusiasm. Oh, right. I think I got carried away. But anyways, yes. It's fantastic. I'll get your coin just a second. And she runs upstairs. What a sweet little thing. She's, like... In her early 20s. You so, know, that means that you're obligated to do this now. You cannot run away with the money, right? Hmm. Of good faith and all that, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> I'm not... No, I'll do the job. I'm not going to risk my life. Okay. Ah, that's what, that's what I'm for. Anyway, we should oh, move these tables together or something. Mm. It's a bit awkward just talking like this. Yeah. yeah. All the tables are still kind of clustered in the middle from the 
the the traders earlier in the evening, so you guys can all join in. Perfect. I'm just gonna. Well, I'm deeply sorry. I do believe I have forgone um, giving proper introductions here. I don't yeah. think anybody's really introduced themselves yet. That's fine, lad. Yeah, so let's go around the table, and if each of you would like to describe your characters. Well, my name is Atlas Galanodal. Um, right now, um, like an elf, I am wearing a robe uh, that looks very dirty from hunting and from being in forests. Um, I have blue eyes and I have long, um, kind of like blondish hair that's going out of my cape, like a very long, slender physique. And yeah, it's the basics. Does everybody want to post their character arc, or how do we do that? Oh, sure. We could do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that would be art, so... Yeah, I didn't know, didn't know what you wanted to do with it, so... I sh shall post them in general. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, continue describing your characters. Well, Trent is uh, what appears to be of lizard folk. Some sort of like salamanderish traits. Um, he's currently clad in some makeshift leather armor, so to say. And um, well, yeah, the last thing I remember before coming to this town, more or less, was running through the desert before um, Loken found me, along with uh, the tradesman. Um, he's seen wielding his new rapier and two daggers, as well as having a short bow by his side. And yeah, that's, like, he doesn't really appear of much else, so to say. Hi, and I'm the Lorcan who find him. Um, you see, a short, but oddly stocky owl, Alan, um, doesn't hire, doesn't really wear too much in terms of like armor, really just some clothes over the important parts. Uh, some girdles were uh, an axe, a warhammer, and some javelins are affixed in his money pouch, but other than that, not all that much. Right. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm Morgan, and uh, pleasure to meet y'all. If you need somebody to stand behind, even though there's not all that much of me, <laughs> uh, don't hesitate to ask up on me, eh? <laughs> you see Loom sitting there, she's... Well, appears to be fairly young, white hair with a uh, few uh, pitch black streaks in it. The face and part of her body covered in equally uh, black tattoos. Nice to meet y'all. I'm Luna Lyra. Some of you might have heard already. Well, Greeks just call me Grave Mistress. Um, you can see Nick uh, on her hips is a rapier as well, and on her back a longbow. I preferably just stay in range, but if it comes down to it, I don't mind either. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, I am my own. As you see, in Genasi, bit well modeled, a bit looks a little, looks like slightly weak. But you can see him build, but you can see two blades shift and also, also, also two bows. What? Why so do there are two bows? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you, you, you don't know, maybe he'll do well with them. 
Last we see a uh, blue skinned, very light blue skinned um, sea elf, about five foot ten or so. Um, quite muscly, hasn't really got much, quite slender frame, but what is there is basically just pure muscle. Um, a lot down her right eye and eyebrow, there is quite a sizable scar um, that goes through. And you see also on her neck, where above the leather, you actually see slits in her neck, but they don't like look like scars or self-inflicted. Um, she's wearing quite basic um, clothing, um, looks quite worn out at this point in time. And outside of that, she has quite a lot of weapons on her. Uh, you see by her side there is quite an old and rusted trident. Um, there's a long sword on her hip as well as a few javelins and hand axes on her back. Um, her hair goes just below the shoulder blades and is in a much sort of darker blue, almost like purplish colour. As the other quite apparent feature is her quite large ears that are pointing out from the sides. Right, and well, my name is Scylla. I normally deal with things up front and personal. So, anything that comes rushing towards us, I will probably be there. Well, well, very well. I'll see you at the front lines then. <laughs> Aye, well, I'll put it this way then. So, we've got a day's travel ahead of us. Is there anything people need to do in the day? I don't know why people are here, but... Have you got any <laughs> Fair enough. Right. At this point, um, Lillian comes back and um, she heads to you, Scylla, and kind of hands you a handful of gold coins. She doesn't have a pouch. I'll just open my pouch and put them in. And cheers. Oh, this is just wonderful. Um, okay. Um, I think you know everything. Um, tomorrow I'll lead you out and I'll give you more uh, specific direction. But for now, um, if anyone wants another drink, uh, it's on the house. And otherwise, you have all have rooms upstairs. And yeah, so. Wake up tomorrow, bright and early. Mm. Right, then. Mm. I think right. I should up bright and early uh, to, when she says that the breads are prepared. Loon will stand up and excuse herself mm. and go up, go upstairs to head to bed early. Well, mm. I prefer to go to bed early, so I'm not a fan of drinking in general, so. I'll see you all tomorrow. Alright, fair enough. Fair as well. Um, do tell me, is there any chance I could perhaps buy some leftover meat you have? Um, you would have... Uh, um... Oh yeah, no, you came in late. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that'd be good. Lillian, um... will uh, go and fetch some for you. Lovely. Um, another three silver. Yeah, sure. And she comes back with, uh, like, a parchment, like, butcher's paper, wrapped parcel, and she hands that to you. Thank you so much. Are you sure you don't want me to cook this for you first? Or... No, it'll be fine. Okay. Need for hunting. Ah, okay. So, are you heading off I'm now? Well, you know. No, I don't. Are you heading off now? Unless there's much to contemplate here, I believe one of us have already left and there's plenty for us to do tomorrow. Hey, you say that, we'll probably walk into a place full of rats and then come back, so. <laughs> well, there's still plenty of time to walk. Who knows, maybe we'll punch a ghost. <laughs> what I wouldn't like to see that. 
I mean, one can hope. <laughs> uh, I like that. I think I'll go out and find myself a lovely place under the stars. Under the stars? Yeah. And you'll have a pleasant evening. Wait, I would, I would like to say out in Draconic, just like, for curiosity's sake, does anybody speak Draconic? Uh, um... Anyone understand what he said? Is that lizard speak? Yeah, sure, you wink all that. I'll just blink to Scylla. Uh, oh, I do, actually. Okay, no, that makes sense. Uh, what, hmm. what, what did you, what did you say? I just asked if anybody was speaking the language. I, no. I was surprised yes. that you do. What sort of test is this? Uh, <laughs> made something in particular. Uh, he says in draconic back. I was just, you know, for curiosity's sake. So it's good to know what language people speak other than the common language. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> so the, the draconic language is fairly um, guttural. It has this weird, like, kind of... Uh, this kind of high tone, but almost guttural noises mixed in. So it, hearing it from threat kind of makes sense. And it, like, um, with his, like, you know overall appearance and stuff it kind of feels natural coming out of him seeing the owl do it <laughs> is somewhat alarming <laughs> I, I see it with shit but well in that case I think if we're hitting up early might as well hit the hay alright uh, you need a you want a room with me or yeah, sure. Alright. If you guys are rooming for each other, you can knock, uh, one of you can knock off five silver. Mm hmm. I'll do it. Yeah. So, instead of both of I'll you paying, for... one of you pays. Yeah, I pay, I pay for the, for the. Cool. So, unless there's anything else, Atlas heads back out. The rest of you. Make your way to your rooms. Hmm. And how much is it for the drinks for me, for, for, for me and Threat uh, for the night? It was uh, three silver. Three okay. silver for the, the meal and drink. Hmm. Uh, well, so. uh, for how many, how many silver is a gold again? Okay. So, Atlas, you make your way back out, and you find a small grove of trees, like, mm -hmm. in between where the watchtowers are and the town. So you're a little halfway, little quiet place, and you can call Jura the safe lane. No, I will. I'll feed her the, uh, the meat I bought. She is very enthusiastic to have fresh meat. Hmm. No luck hunting yourself. Um, <laughs> she kind of sends you this emotional wave of... Um, she likes to hunt, but she prefers to be with you. Hmm. Hopefully we'll get strong enough to be able to do this without us having to hide. One day, Yura. One day. She kind of nuzzles into you and then curls around and you, like, sleep kind of with her kind of curled around your head. Hmm. The night passes. The next morning comes with a breath of new adventure and an excited anxiety in the back of your mind, displayed quite physically by Lillian practically bouncing as each of you make your way back into the tavern common area. Each of you is served with a warm breakfast of sausages and eggs with fresh milk, as Lillian lays out directions specifically to the rooms. Fortunately, 
route for you. There's a road that runs that way, but it's fairly empty, so monsters may have gotten close. Which uh, direction is this, sorry? Um, west. So, if you look at the map, it's like, there. I don't see your cursor. The, the, the That's east. Cursor is actually, yeah, That's good what? job, Dirk. So whoever pinged this, whoever pinged there was that's east. Yeah. And you just need to hit far enough east and you'll be there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake. So it, it's like there. Uh. Can I let me go fucking. It's more than a day's travel in that case, but eh, it'll be fine. Yeah, it's math. It's whatever. It's roughly it's there. It's days here in the east. <laughs> what is it called? What, what are we gonna call it? Haunted Mansion? Ruins? Yeah, sure. I can add it to the map after the session. Okay, because I was literally just doing it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I can, because I have incarnate, so I can just go into that and mm. add it. Oh no, I was like making meaning uh, like how Elmark and Elzan are a journal entry, are like an entry. Oh, right. I can also do that. You remember how to. I do, because <laughs> I added uh, Elm Elmark. The no, compute specialist is impressed. I, I did add one of them. Okay. Oh, the fucking chair! I just fucking <laughs> forgot! <laughs> I don't know how what? long that'll take. Son of a bitch. I've been there for like two hours! <laughs> <laughs> I've been <laughs> zoomed in on Elmark this whole time, because that's where we are talking and I just scrolled down. Side note for Pip and Andy, whenever you can, on the map, draw a chair. And then... See, set a timer to see how long it takes for Derp to notice. This has been going on for like five fucking years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it will continue happening for five fucking more. <laughs> okay. As long as I am here, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. As you guys are all having your breakfast and... Lillian is kind of taking you through the directions. Um, Harley comes in, the proprietor of the Briarmalt Inn, and Lillian's father. And she kind of visibly quiets down with a hushed expression. And um, Lillian then rushes through the conversation as Harley kind of curiously takes in the group before moving on. Doesn't say anything, he's just kind of regarding you, Lillian, and then makes his way out the back. With the plan set and laid before you, you gather your gear, check your weapons, and set out in the brisk morning air, setting out westward. Would you guys like to continue? Uh. I think this is a good stopping point to like mm. see how Phantom is this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Agreed. Cool. Uh, just think, do we have do we have breakfast on the end? Yeah. Yes. What about second breakfast? <laughs> That's on the word. And, and food. Let's not forget about food. Lillian will make you. Well, technically, it would come with the room. So. Let's have kinda an like, hunt on the way. It's fine. Kind of like okay. better breakfast situation. Like all the idea of like oh. breakfast, and just uh, like, I like throw myself into a feeding frenzy. This would be great. <laughs> um, Adelis, I I would have assumed would have come in for breakfast. She would have made her way back. Probably she probably would have woken up earlier than the rest of you and made her way back to the inn for breakfast. Mm. Guys, I spent so long in this fucking map. <laughs> Well, even more. Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna be good players and start writing shit down. So I'm gonna make a journal journal entry for the fucking NPCs. Okay. I would just like to know how to spell their name, but. Yes, exactly. That's my main okay. reason for doing it. Wait, so which names do you need? Wait, let me. Oh wait, I have general MP. Well, I have the NPC for the NPC sheet for two dot. Uh, I mean, you can just set it to be visible for all players, so... Yeah, I think I did. 
need to unlock shops and buildings. Uh, cool. You should all be. Uh, now we, yes, now we can see it. And then I can add the other one. Oh, uh, well. Yes, you can just add the, uh, just a little bit. Um, which ones? I assume Clayton, Lillian. Yeah, Clayton, yes. Um, Lillian was... The barmaid. Who's to give Xelazano the adventure, yes. Yeah. Um... Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. 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 you Ow, ow. Okay. You just mute him. Yeah, I'll mute him. He's a DM, no. Okay. Wait, until it's fixed. There he goes. Sounds like it's fixed. Yeah, no, he stopped. muted himself. He muted himself. Perfect. Now what? Oh no. <laughs> oh no, it's back. Oh no. Okay, he unmuted himself and Hello? our ears didn't die. Yes, we can hear you properly again. What the fuck? Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah. So, if you need those spellings. Where? Where did you send the spelling? He put them in the chat. Oh. Yeah. I'll oh, I spelled Lily like the flower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll see if I can. Wait, who's Harley? Harley is the barman. He's the owner of the tavern. And I Lily thought that was Clayton. <laughs> no, Clayton Clay was the priest. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't met him. Don't know him. Yeah, he, he's my friend. I would like a personal character added as well. I would like the uh, the merchant with whom uh, me and uh, Lorcan traveled. Oh, Rudy. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna be important for when I find out when I find this one guy. <laughs> one around. guy. <laughs> a year later. Listen up. I, I have a, I have a personal vendetta against Bahia. That's pretty much it. Oh dear. The bitch sold us faulty goods. Well, technically not us, but he sold Rudy faulty goods. And he Four years me. down the line, we're level 15, then we come back. I am here <laughs> for vengeance! <laughs> Basically. Yeah. yeah, end of the campaign, you've killed gods, you've saved the world, you go to this one town, this one random junk merchant, <laughs> you shall pay. Are you by here? Yes. <laughs> You're my wrath. Just in this place. That's in the best Elvish language casting wish, wish for him to never have existed. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All time gets changed, you never go to Elmark, existence. the campaign doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> Making it all a dream. So, um, Rudy and Cecilia run the general store in the town. So, presumably if you ever need, like, gear and equipment, that's where you'll get it. Oh, uh, question. I kind of missed how much gold I got from Clayton. You didn't get any gold from Clayton. Well, you what got did he from get us? Tudor. Oh, it was Tudor. I somehow... Okay, how much was that? Uh, let me double check. Now we go into the admin. We go into the previous notes.
I think I actually put it. But you would have been traveling for... Uh, give me a second. This is this is coding, all right. You can change the journal entries into HTML code. Oh my god! I mean, yeah, that's what the coder does. Yeah, but do the basic markdown. Aeon would have got uh, ten gold. Um, Loon would have got eight eight gold. Eight gold. That's, yeah, that's, that's good. Because you you were you've been traveling with them for a month. Oh, it's an entire month. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Money. That does that, that's a lot of money. Uh, I believe it was south of uh, Elmark, right? West yeah. is where you're going. West. The ruins oh. are west. Very near to the west. Good to know. Before Dirk puts the fucking rune marker now north of Elmark. <laughs> cool. So, the party is gathered. The adventure begins. Mm. Ooh. West. Eh. Okay, sorry, I'm back, uh, something, uh, my laptop not plugged in, so, for a second, my screen was black. <laughs> That's the Right there. Well, at least nobody's gonna die on my watch, so, so. I accept your challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Look. I'm a, I play my character with 15 health. How do you have 15 health? I have negative one card. You're gonna die. That's impressive. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, yes, Lorcan did take a hit for 16 damage in our intro, qu uh, intro, and I'm like, I'm happy that wasn't me. Oh, like, fuck. <laughs> see, the funny thing about this, um, 6 HP wouldn't even be half my health. Yeah, exactly. I, I accept your challenge of not dying. <laughs> I am going to spam spare the dying out of you. Yeah, basically. Well, I'm already dead, so that'll be fine. Well, no, no, no. Spare the dying just means uh, if you have zero hit points, I can just make I know, you I know. stable. But but all, all I can say is, I don't breathe. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Watch out. Touche. Actually, is there like any fucking ritual spell that is uh, healing? Or like ritual? There is no uh, prayer of healing. Let me check ritual cast for cleric. Okay. Mm. Well, I mean, if we I've to drawn play. a chair that will not be found in like a month. You challenge <laughs> Isn't that the moment where you just mark the entire map for like drawings and then? Hey, 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 hey! That's cheating. Is that the one under the volcano? No, I'll oh, send you a found. screenshot, I'll send you a screenshot. You... Stop! Oh, no, yeah, no, it's no, only no. this one, it's only this one. Send that's me the screenshot. A... Also, that's not a volcano. Oh, I see, that's... I found it. Oh, I... that's a good, that's an great, amazing one. Good stuff, <laughs> I, found, I found it. That's really good. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> what did you find? I found the chair that Phantom drew. I'm gonna send this to Alan. They hit a fuck god fucking <laughs> Oh there it is. <laughs> we'll never know. Key. How would he know? They're never gonna know. They're gonna know. They're gonna make you Now the only thing that'll be impressive is if you can 
put a chair on Elma without Derp noticing. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard. Well, the thing is, I'm about to reload the map, so <laughs> I don't know if the thing will... I'll draw a new one. Uh, no, I think the map itself was the, like just background image, so... And the drawing is on top, so I think if you change like the image in the background, it should matter for the drawings. Okay. Unless fun. you make an entirely new scene. I'm not gonna make a new scene, so... Hmm. Oh, well, I have to go to bed. It's, uh, I am so same. Same period. Same. Thanks for the what? session. Yeah, um, I'll uh, catch you people around. Good night. Good night.